Episode, I guess, is phenomenal. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. But at the same time, $35? $35, Atlas? Really? I need you to understand something. Come here. Do you see that big ass box up there? I paid money for that. Not only that, do you see this? Do you see what it says right there? Purchased. Digital. As in, I bought this big ass game twice because Amazon was being a little bitch. So, the last thing I need, Atlas, is to pay 35 goddamn dollars on some dumb season pass that was ready the very second I hit pre order. But now that I got that off my chest, join me as I kiss this game's ass for the next 10 minutes like the sheep that I am. I'll start by saying that I did indeed play and finish the answer, uh, aka the original episode, I guess, back on the PlayStation 2 years ago. Did I think it was this horrendous, exhausting nightmare like most people seem to think without even? trying no i don't think so did i think it was this masterpiece of storytelling and this integral part of persona 3's overall story oh fuck no but i do think it was an enjoyable experience to say the least i for one loved fas's combat more than i did uh, persona 3 portables 4s and 5s so at the time just having more of it with an increased challenge was great episode i guess aims to renew that experience for a modern audience does it do that well eh Kinda. They could have definitely added a lot more to the Abyss of Time to make it more engaging. And uh, the same goes for Tartarus in the base game. There was so much missed potential here, but we could have had some puzzles here and there, some uh, hidden walls that carry special loot maybe, some gimmick floors, some mini games. But no, we just get these dumb breakable hands that add nothing to the game. Bottom line is, if you didn't enjoy the answer way back then, you probably won't be enjoying episode I guess anytime soon. People seem to love the new Tartarus despite the minimal changes though, so well, I, I don't know how that works. Are the graphics and the lack of breakable objects really the only thing you people didn't jive with? Apart from those shiny new graphics though, it's still through and through a traditional dungeon crawling JRPG. If that's not your thing, and you're just here to see some Yukari Mitsuru bonding time, just watch the cutscenes on YouTube or some shit. For the rest of us though, unlike base Persona 3 Reload, I can safely say that episode I guess is 100% the best way to experience I guess journey. I am so happy they kept this game's difficulty intact here. Again, unlike base Persona 3 Reload, the difficulty balancing here is just right. I said this once and I'll say it again. I don't need a game to be soul crushingly difficult for it to be fun. Just don't encourage mindlessness. Give me a reason to fuse some broken ass personas. Give me a reason to strategize a bit in battle. Otherwise, what's the point? And while Persona 3's combat never reaches the complexities of a game, say like SMT5, it still does its job pretty well. And it's the best Persona's combat has ever been. Except for maybe Persona Q's combat. Those are really good. Characters are noticeably more balanced here. It even takes a while before they gain access to the higher level skills. Meanwhile, enemies are casting severe level magic spells at these defenseless teenagers who still use media. Yukari took so long to learn Madurama that I, I was convinced I got rid of the skill by accident, and I wasted 3000 yen just to make sure that wasn't the case. Gives me a reason to use Ken more, I guess. This is a good thing, because it always feels like there's still a challenge up ahead no matter how strong your characters get. I even got one one-shotted and lost like an hour of progress at one point. Uh, I mean, it feels like crap at the moment, but but it's a good thing. I made a dumb mistake, and now I know not to fuck up again. It genuinely feels like a PS2 era game this time, as it should. Because if you're not going to add any modern adjustments to the dungeon crawling, at least keep the original experience intact, know what I mean? Uh, I do like the addition of the Monad uh, challenge doors. They're, they're also kind of the reason why uh, it took me so long to finish the DLC. I swear, you find these things on like every other floor, it's insane. And of course, I can't just ignore them, being the little loot goblin that i am also i'm sorry but if you don't pick the rightmost door every single time uh, we we can't be friends i'm sorry I, I don't make the rules here oh and uh having access to a two-way teleporter on like every other floor two is absolute horseshit even akahiku is confused that's a one-way teleporter but there's no need to head back yet my man's still stuck in 2007 it's not a one-way teleporter anymore buddy you can literally pop out save and pop right back in eliminating any sense of danger whatsoever now i still do think it's crappy that we have to pick the highest difficulty just to have some semblance of a challenge most people wouldn't think to do that i certainly didn't when i played base reload and i came to regret it almost immediately what's more depressing is the fact that your persona compendium from the base game carries over to episode i guess 
on any difficulty that isn't heartless in a game that's 95% dungeon crawling. Imagine paying $35 to wipe the floor with every single enemy you come across and finishing the game in like 5 hours. So right now where I stand on Persona 3's gameplay is I still think uh, FES is better than base reload but episode I guess absolutely trumps the answer in almost every single way possible. But now let's talk music for a bit. The soundtrack here in episode I guess is just as good as I remember it being with the exception of 331 of course. Y you've probably heard this opinion a thousand times by now so I, I won't spend too much time on it but the first time I heard this rendition of the song I, I just face bombed so hard but like five seconds later I just started laughing hysterically because I just imagined a group of people coming together at uh, Atlas HQ listening to this and going hell yeah this is amazing meanwhile the song is just <laughs> Thank God it only plays for like 5 seconds in game. On the other hand, I love the new battle theme, Don't, uh, even more than it's going down now, I think, because there's no clocking this time. My only complaint really is I think the chorus part ends a bit too abruptly, right when she sings this line right here. It's weird, I don't know. As for the Persona 1 and 2 song remixes, again, I really wish these were part of the base game, not some part of some dub season pass bullshit. Tartarus's theme was boring as fuck, so th these would have been so much more useful back then. The default Abyss of Time music is actually really good though, so make sure you turn the DLC music off when you gain access to a newer area, just to hear how it sounds like if for nothing else. And of course, the best song in the game, Heartful Cry, is just as good as it's always been. Thank god they didn't fuck that one up. Also, the uh, credits music, Brand New Days, it, it made me tear up all over again. The acoustic guitar solo is just, just perfect. And finally, I want to talk about some characters. Specifically, Metis and Yukari. I'll leave Yukari for later because, uh, oh boy, there's a lot to talk about there. Now, honestly, in the answer, apart from her beautiful design, I didn't really care much for Metis. She was just very forgettable. I placed her in the C tier and my Persona character tier list. And her voice actress, while talented, kind of made her sound annoyed the entire time, which is kind of weird for an amnesic character. Here, though, in episode, I guess, I freaking love Metis. She, she's adorable. She really is just like a blissfully ignorant child, which is partly what makes Persona 4's Teddy somewhat appealing. The other characters even point that detail out multiple times, but nothing spells it out clearer than this voice line. <laughs> She's a toddler, I swear. Menace, sweetie, it's your bedtime. Menace, don't forget to brush your teeth. Even just letting her interact more with the rest of the party really brings out her personality. So yeah, I, I love Metis. She's such a lovable dork. She she's probably a B-tier character now. But now, let's deal with this whole Yukari fiasco. If you weren't aware, Yukari is my favorite member of C's. And whether it's the answer or episode I guess, this prologue does wonders for her character. By the way, we're getting into spoiler territory right now, so if Persona 3's story or Yukari herself mean even the slightest bit to you, you owe it to yourself to click off this video and go experience it for yourself. I know I said you mainly play episode I guess for the uh, dungeon crawling, but I mean there is some heavy hitting stuff in here and uh, some powerful dialogue. It's just that these are all crammed towards the end of the game and it's the circumstances that led to them that aren't exactly noteworthy. Anyway, Yukari. Now, prior to experiencing it for myself, I had already heard talk that uh, Yukari's breakdown scene, uh, arguably the best scene in the game, had been taken down a notch in episode, I guess. Once I heard that, I immediately understood that that would mean they would be taking her anger away from that portion of the game. Anger, might I add, being one of the five stages of grief and somewhat integral in driving the point of the game home. Knowing that, I was ready to start hating on this change. But now, after experiencing it for myself, I think I prefer this version. What I was worried about was them butchering her character. But that is not the case here. Both cutscenes show believable aspects of her character. One shows anger followed by sorrow, while this new one doubles down on sorrow. And plus, Mitsuru and Yukari's voice actresses did such a good job that it's honestly hard to be mad. I could honestly feel my heart breaking too. So the scene itself, I have no beef with. What I hate though, 
is why they felt the need to make this change in the first place. I don't know about you guys, but I love seeing the ugly sides of characters after they undergo tragedy. There's nothing more captivating or interesting than that in my eyes. Yukari's behavior in the answer was wholly understandable. But now, knowing Atlas decided they needed to fix her and make her more likable it's kind of a slap in the face they let junpei get away with his mean comments towards the mc so why not yukari too or is this just sexism now our, our girl is not allowed to mess up is, is that what this is about they needed to sell her as a marketable waifu so players are not allowed to see her ugly side is that it if so what a huge step backwards this is i hate this idea that game characters need to be these perfect pristine little angels with zero flaws to them people do the same thing with your skin persona 4 it's dumb we keep this up and we're going to end up with the blandest most boring characters to ever grace the face of the earth in persona 6 but i digress but that's all i had to say regarding episode i ravage them uh but 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 but, but that's all i had to say regarding episode i'm not done <sighs> god fucking damn it okay fine persona jokers here as a post-game boss Yay! I would normally be more excited for something like this, but well, you see, there's the fun kind of post game bosses, like uh, say, Margaret's fight in Persona 3 Portable, and then you got ones like Elizabeth and Joker, who impose all these nonsensical hidden rules you have to follow, or else they just nuke you to oblivion. It's bullshit for the sake of bullshit. So I walk in, all excited to fight Joker, but then, first turn. He nukes my entire party. So, natural conclusion I had was, of course, it's just an enduring soul check. Luckily, I had a skill card for that. So, I walk back in. I survive the nuke he throws at me. But then he does it again. Okay, so fuck me. I guess I need both endure and enduring soul just to get to the actual fight. Now, I survive the two nukes he throws at me. But what's there to do other than heal, right? So, I do that. Then he nukes me again. What the fuck? So, obviously, I'm missing something, right? There's some bullshit hidden rule that I'm not following. Turns out, you can't have someone with auto charge or concentrate on your team. So, that ultimate weapon, you spent hours farming for Metis. Yeah, you, you can't use that. Okay, so fine. I take the weapon off and I go fight him again and he doesn't nuke me this time. Hallelujah. I can actually play the game. But this man still one shots my entire party with full buffs and debuffs on. So they basically want us to farm instances and tarot cards just to be able to survive in this fight. And listen, I'm... I, I'm good. I'm good. I already did that once. I beat Elizabeth and I'm satisfied. I don't want to go through that again. Pause. Gaff. Okay, now I'm done. Conclusion, would I recommend people pick up episode I guess? Absolutely. It's a fun time, albeit also depressing. I do talk shit about the price tag, but I do think what's in here is worth the $35 price tag. Uh, just not in this case where it could have easily been a part of the already overpriced uh, collector's edition. I went along with it this time because Persona 3 means a lot to me. But if they pull this shit again with Persona 6, I'm not biting. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go check out the Metaphor demo for the first time. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like the video and subscribe for more gaming content just like this. It really helps me out a lot. And until next time, guys, peace.